Alright. Boomer's gonna be a good boy. You're gonna be a good boy. Yes, you are. <laughs> Let's put you in your box, okay? Welcome, everybody, right back here to the 100th Q&A Mail Call Monday video. That's right. I can't believe it. I've done 100 of these. This, to me, is just tremendous. 100 of them is just remarkable. You know, there's a couple of contests that I, I forgot to do, unfortunately. Just so much has been going on in my life. Just so much incredible stuff. There has just been so much stuff that happened to me during the month of January that, uh, unfortunately, I forgot to run the contest for the month of February on the 1st. So, anyway, it's the beginning of March. This is the first video. I announced our contest for not only March, but retroactively, we went back to February just the same. We got some mail open up today. We got about three envelopes here. Looks like two of them are coming from Australia, and one of them is comes, coming from our... Uh, one of our regulars. So, as always, you guys, licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly that way you get updates every time that I upload a video. Don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles and VW Garage, which you can find up on duckshit.net, my website. That's right, you'll find all my different social media links, you'll find my Instagram, you'll find my Facebook, you'll find Boomer's, well, it's not really Boomer's Facebook, it's Skeeter's Facebook, but Boomer is sharing it with the recently deceased Skeeter, which is still breaking my heart. Anyways, we'll be back right after that intro, so please stick around. Thanks so much. <laughs> well, we almost forgot. We got to do a couple of contests. Let's see who won a Duckman Cycles t-shirt. First, we'll visit our website. We'll check out the new website. We'll look at our past videos. We want to look up the month of January. Let's see. Month of January is a really tough month because so much was happening to me that month between losing Skeeter and then losing my job all at once. So uh, let's stay away from the unhappy videos and let's go with one of the good videos here. How about this one? Ske Skeeter's health, the W deck lid. Yeah, unfortunately, Skeeter's health. That's right. I saw it coming before it, uh, it happened. So we'll get in here. We'll steal our... YouTube video link out of here. Then we'll go off to our comment selector. We'll paste it in, get the YouTube comments, and start. And let's see who won the contest here. Papa Chubby 1951, you have won the Duckman Cycles t shirt contest for the month of February. That's right, the month of February. Well, let's do it again for the month of March, since it's the beginning of March. And let's see who won this month. All right, looking through our videos here. Let's do uh, Gregory is moving video. You know what? No, let's not do that. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go with this video, the fixing a flat tire video, because this is the one that so many people hated me on. All the people that acted like douchebags, I deleted their comments. So let's go ahead and look for the people that did support us. And let's go ahead and go from here. Get the YouTube comments starting. We got a hundred unique comments. Who wins the contest? Fernando C. Big teaser. Take it off. LOL. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of course, that he's referring to B. McQueen in that one. But nonetheless, you've won the contest for March. So that's right. Papa Chubby and Fernando C. Make sure that you contact me. You can hit me up on duckshit.net. Look for the contact page and email me through there or duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Please make sure that you contact me. If you don't get with me, well, you don't get your t-shirts. Thank you so much, you guys. Really appreciate you. And to get into the contest, all that you guys have to do is visit any of my videos and leave a comment. That's right. All you got to do is leave a comment to enter yourself in my videos. If you leave something that's douchebaggy, we're going to delete it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. All right. Well, welcome back. Here we are. Let's pop open some of this mail. First things first, let's do the one here from uh, Pinnegar. I'm going to bet that that's Matt Pinnegar. He's one of our regulars, really nice guy, along with his wife. They've always been really, really good to us here on this, uh, on this YouTube and the stuff that we do. They've always supported us and encouraged us through everything. And he's just been a really wonderful person. All right, what have we got here? We got us a note and a something wrapped in tissue. Let's see what it is. Maybe it's one of them coronavirus sneeze tissues. Okay, dear duck man, I'm very sorry that your duck Skeeter died. Oh, really sorry your Skeeter died, and I hope you're feeling better. Even though she died, you'll always have her in your heart 
from Maley Rose, Sensorly Pinnegar. I hope you feel better. Here's a picture. Well, I'm kind of breaking the COPA rules here, but um, she's a child. She loves Skeeter too. I'm going to bet that she's uh, Matt Pinnegar's kid. Oh, here it is, more written down. I'm sorry, my name is Maley Pinnegar. I'm Matt and Carolyn's daughter. There she is. Thank you so much, Maley. And I hope I'm saying that right. I think I am. I really appreciate that. really appreciate that. And it looks like she gave us a gift. What could it be? Oh, wow. Now that is cool. And I have wonderful purpose for this. This is a, um, a pen, but it's not just any pen. I'm trying to get the thing open here. Let out all that coronavirus. It is a pen that's also a ruler. It uh, appears it's measured in both inches and centimeters, so it's both uh, imperial and metric. It's um, also got a level built into it. So this will come in great handy, especially with the new job that I do now. Nowadays, you probably know, I'm in the uh, carpentry and construction field. Uh, mostly I just do the... Uh, the billing paperwork and uh, office duties, but uh, last week I was actually found myself cutting up some boards and smashing rocks, and I'm actually a little sore from that. Uh, <laughs> it's not the kind of work that I usually do, and I spent a lot of uh, the day constantly picking up bricks off the ground and standing back up, and my hands are mechanics hands, so they didn't feel any, any of the pain at all, but the fact that I was just bending down to pick up brick and standing back up to put it back on a, on a stack all day long, it took its toll on my lower back. And, uh, yeah, I'm still a little sore from that one, and that was Friday. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, let's open up the next one here. Thank you, Maley, once again. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. No, you can't have that, Boomer. Be a good boy. He's being a little psycho today. You be a good boy. Come on, you be a good boy. Don't be like this. <laughs> Today I was working on the uh, the Volkswagen bus, and while I was underneath it, I was doing a little bit of uh, welding and fitment of parts on the front end. And he snuck up on me, and I didn't expect it because I was making all this noise. And he comes over, and he started pecking up under my shirt. He got up under there and started tickling me. And I didn't know if it was a person or what the hell just happened. And I started giggling like a little girl. And I'm not ticklish, but if you get me by surprise, you'll make me giggle, and I'll start wiggling all about. And he got me. He actually got me. So, um... Yeah, it was it was a <laughs> it was a funny moment. Anyway, he came over to me, let me hug him, which was quite a surprise. I snuggled up to him while I was working underneath the bus, and then I released him, and he wouldn't go away. He kept pecking at me, so I tossed him across the yard, and he came running back, and he got me again. And that's why I named him Boomerang. His name's not actually Boomer. Boomer's for short, but Boomerang is actually his name because I just can't get rid of him. And he's always been that way, even when he was a, a duckling. If he was misbehaving or something, I sent him away, he'd just come right back. <laughs> he's not so good at following, but uh, he's definitely good at returning when you want him to be gone. Now, these two came from Australia. One is addressed to me, and the other one is addressed to Boomer for his birthday. On the back side, they come from, uh, wow, these are from Destiny Frog Lover, both of them. She is a, uh, a friend of ours, and especially Skeeter's. That goes back, I'm going to say we go back about 10 years together. I, I think she sent something to Skeeter on Skeeter's 10th birthday, and that was 8 years ago, and I know she was around before then. So I'm really, really thankful that she's been around. So first, let's open this up and see what we got for Boomer, because your birthday comes. Yeah, your birthday comes. It already came and went. Yeah, it did. But cards from Australia take longer to get here. Yes, they do. In fact, what's the date on that, out of curiosity? February 1st. So yeah, it took an entire month to get here, because today that I'm recording this, it's actually March 1st. I wanted to get this done earlier, several days ago, but with how much I work, it's just not possible. Anyway, it says, bottoms up, and there's a seagull with a bunch of ducks all taking shots together. And then the seagull is not happy when the ducks literally put their bottoms up. <laughs> Give me some more light here so you guys can see that. There it is. Anyways, yeah. All right, to Boomer, cheers on your birthday, love from Destiny. Look at that, see that? Yeah, that was yours for your birthday. Yeah, look at that. You be a good boy, you be a good boy. You're four years old now, yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Ow! <laughs> Don't hurt, Daddy, be nice. All right, this one's addressed to me. 
Let's see what we've got here. This one is something special for Daddy. Yeah. With sympathy, deepest sympathy and heartfelt thoughts are being sent to you. To Glenn, to bring someone comfort at the sad time with love. So sorry to hear about the loss of Skeeter. My thoughts are with you at this very sad time with love from Destiny. I really appreciate that. I'm still trying so hard not to be a blubbery mess. It's It's been now over a month. It's been like five weeks uh, since we lost Skeeter. And I'm still beside myself. I mean, every morning I'm still so used to her being there, and she's not. Uh, it's it's still, even though it's been so long, that it's, it's hard adjusting. The good thing is, the good thing, and I, and I always try to look at the good things. The good thing is Boomer here and I are getting much closer. Much closer. He's nothing like Skeeter. He's a completely different personality. Not that he's a bad thing. He's just, he's a very different thing. And, um... I love him, I really do, and, and I'm glad that I have a little more time with him now that, uh, that he's alone. Now that he's alone, he especially needs me. He doesn't have anybody or anything else. Yeah, your daddy loves you. Your daddy loves you and he takes care of you. Yes, he does. <laughs> well, this week, I received some questions, actually in the form of um, criticism, and it was not constructive by any means at all. As you know, I have a new co-host. She's not in this video, unfortunately. She uh, couldn't make it over here today because I just didn't know when I was going to record. And I, it was just, it would have been wrong to have her just waiting for me to to give her that call to show up for, for recording video. I didn't know when I was ever going to get this done. So, unfortunately, uh, B. McQueen is not here with us in this video. Today, you will see her again in the future. But a lot of people just hated the fact that I brought somebody new onto my YouTube channel and they absolutely hated the fact that we interacted and had as much banter as we did, laughed like we did, and went so far as saying that my channel has taken the wrong direction or that it is the wrong type of humor and they, they find it completely disgusting, which I honestly don't think it's that bad at all because we don't actually say what we mean. We make think about it so whatever's going on is in your head <laughs> which means you're the person that thought of it not us we just make little remarks and it's up to you to think about them but anyway some people just really were shitty about it and our last video where I had her uh, put the tire plug in for some reason I just received so much bullshit from so many people, and in, in no way at all was any of it constructive. Nobody was giving me a suggestion of these a-holes. But at the same time as I received so many a-holy responses, I received so much pos positive criticism. And it's not just like, hey, she's got nice tits. I mean, you know, there was some of that. But it was more like, um, I'm really happy to see... What are you eating? What did you just eat? I don't know what you just ate, but you shouldn't have it in your mouth. It's styrofoam. Boomer, don't eat styrofoam. That will kill you. Where did you even get that from? Where did you get styrofoam from? Huh? Don't eat styrofoam, you asshole. <laughs> I don't even know where he got it from. I had to pick it out of his mouth. No eating styrofoam, dummy. Stupid head, that will kill you. You will die. I don't want you to die. <laughs> anyway. I received um, a lot of negative criticism, and I received so much positive reinforcement. People told me that they were very happy that I brought her here, and that uh, we had a wonderful chemistry, and that the two of us get along on a level that it's just its hard to find somebody like that where the two of you connect. And no, we're not in a relationship. I keep ads answering that. We answered it in our last Q&A video. But no, we're not in a relationship, uh, not in a... Um, a steady relationship, I guess you could say. I mean, we're friends. We're friends, and that's a form of a relationship. But we are not in any way boyfriend, girlfriend, or even messing around. It, it, it's not like that between the two of us. And not to say that it's not ever going to be, but it's not. That's just not what the two of us are. And I'm glad that we have the relationship that we do, and I don't want to mess with it. Because I think if we try to, to take it to the next level or try to, to turn it into something else that it's not, we're going to break it. And you don't want to 
fix what ain't broken. So we're going to leave it alone. We're going to stick with the way we've got it. She's very happy with her Instagram suddenly growing. She never had one before. I opened it up, and I think she's got like 250 followers already. If you'd like to find her Instagram, hit up duckshit.net. You'll find a link to Be McQueen's Instagram, and please follow her. Just the same, find mine there and follow me. Not enough people are listening to me, but they're sure as hell are going over there to look at her. Anyways, I have noticed over the years that um, every time that I... Um, take a break or something happens outside of my control or when I talk about some new idea of something that I'm uh, interested in doing or if uh, I share a success story of something really good that happened to me I get so much negativity these are good things that I'm talking about in most cases and and I get thumbs down I get people telling me they're gonna unsubscribe threatening that's the one threatening to unsubscribe from me. If you're going to threaten me, I'm going to delete you. I will go find your subscription and I will remove you myself. And yes, I have that power to do it on YouTube. It's a hidden little feature, but it's there. I will unsubscribe you myself and I will find your profile and I will block you. Don't you threaten me. That's not what this is about. This is about having fun. And that's what I've been doing here this past month. I've gone through a lot of stuff over the past year. And I haven't hardly talked about any of it. But... The first thing that happened, and uh, first thing that happened, going back, it, it was almost a year ago, we had to put my first grandmother in, the, in a home. She's uh, 90 years old. She's a angry German lady that grew up in Nazi Germany. Not to say that she is a Nazi, but when you're exposed to that type of lifestyle, you kind of get some of that stuff in your head. And she's not used to the world being the way it is. Things, so much stuff has changed during her 90 years that she's been on this earth. And she's unhappy and pissed off and just full of sauerkraut. I mean, she is just a mean old lady. And she can't help it. And she's, she's always been loud and obnoxious anyway. That's just the way she is. But now that she's older and so opinionated and so much, so much stuff has changed, she's not happy. And the family is having a hard time taking care of her. So the only answer was, it's time to put you in a home. Uh, my grandfather, unfortunately, passed about five or six years ago, so she's been alone for all this time. She had a couple of nursemaids, and she always fired them. She'd yell at them, curse at them in German, and then kick them out, fire them. She just didn't want or like anybody, and these people that were trying to take care of her were like, I don't understand why she doesn't like me, and it's like, it's not your fault, it's just, this is the way she is. So anyway, unfortunately, we had to stick my grandmother in the home. And we fast forward another seven, eight months, and then my, my dad started stroking out. He started having some serious strokes and, and health problems. And when they, they gave him a cardiogram, they discovered it's because of a major blockage in his heart. And it, it, the doctor said, if you have a stroke or a heart attack while you're here in the hospital, he said, this, you're probably going to die. We have to put you in for emergency triple bypass surgery. There is no other solution. This is what you have to have. And my dad was not happy with that answer. And it, when it was really hard for all of us to accept. It may be pretty re routine to do a triple bypass surgery, but there's still that, that threat or that risk that you could die. And there was a possibility we could have lost him. And, and it was scary. It really was. And my dad was bus totally beside himself all through it. And he was dealing with, at the same time, his girlfriend was driving him nuts. And, and she's watching this. I'm sorry, but you were. <laughs> and... He drives her nuts. I mean, it's it, the two of them, are, I mean, I hate to say it, but they're a couple of old people, too. My dad is now, he's 77 years old this year, 2020. He's not getting any younger, and his mother now lives with him. She is 98 years old. That's right. She's going to be pushing 100, not this year, but next. This summer, she'll be 99. And unfortunately, during this whole time where he was having all these heart troubles and stroking and everything else, thankfully strokes weren't anything permanent. They were just those little attacks that you get. Um, he couldn't take care of her. So he tried to get a nursemaid in there and take care of her. But the problem was is that just she, she's not together anymore. She's, 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 the best way to put it is fried. You know, her old brain just isn't together. She's always been a nice person. She's always been a nice person. And I think she's still a nice person. But the problem is when you hit that age, you go back to where you came from. You become the child that you used to be. You unlearn things. So she's having trouble taking care of herself. She's having trouble keeping herself clean. And uh, she's just, yeah, like I said, she's going back to being a child. 
So Dad, 77 years old, he's an old man. He doesn't need to be babysitting somebody that's 20 years older than him. He couldn't handle it anymore. So during this whole stint of him being in the hospital, at the same time he's trying to handle the paperwork to get her put into the local home down by him. So two of my grandmothers have gone into the home this past year, and then my dad had the triple bypass surgery. We thought we were going to lose him. So those were the scary things that happened. Then fast forward into January. January came. It was it was a tough Christmas. I saw my dad on Christmas um, uh, after the surgery. After the surgery? When did he have surgery? It was Thanksgiving. So yeah, I did see him on Christmas after the surgery. That's when I went down to visit Earl in the last video that I had. And um, trying to put the whole story back together. And that's, that was accurate. Then I had a several uh, several week period of, of silence, and it was a weird silence. I knew something was coming, and I knew something was up, but I, I didn't know quite what it was. I'm not saying that I'm psychic or something, but I had a feeling that something was going to happen. And it came to my surprise, and I kind of saw it happening for a long time. It's a little skeeter. Unfortunately, on the 23rd of January, we lost her, and that was that was the hardest thing to deal with. You're getting grease on your face, you dumbass. The hardest thing to deal with in my life was losing Skeeter last month, as I did, and, and I'm still having a real hard time with that. On the 23rd, we lost Skeeter, and, and it's just, as I said in the beginning of the video, five weeks I've been without her. Exactly one week after that, my biggest business contract that I had, 60% of my income, um, just gone. Just gone. They replaced... They replaced my contract with somebody else, some larger company that's contracted and consolidated the entire state of Florida. So in other words, I'm not the only one that got fired. They fired all of us. And not because of behavior or performance issues or something like that. In fact, I kind of wish it was behavior issues. I'm going to tell you a story about that. We're going to have a whole Q&A video about what happened to the puke, because that's part of the story. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I thought I got fired for being an asshole, and I was kind of hoping that that was the reason. Because, I mean, I I was a mess. But, you know, I, I, I <laughs> I'm way off topic here. But, anyway, I got fired from the job. And then immediately a week after that, I broke my Nissan 350Z. I ran something over. I don't know what the hell happened. I mangled up the rear suspension on the right-hand side. The car was undrivable until I got all the parts replaced on it. I had the money. It wasn't about that. It wasn't a money-type problem. But I had to fix the damn thing, and I had to find the time to do it. So I went and bought the parts, and I went and fixed the car, and I you know, took it in for an alignment. And it wasn't cheap. It's just this blammo, you know, I got hit with another thing. And then exactly a few days after that, the, the, the uh, Volkswagen Fastback started giving me trouble. And I got to sort that out, too. The transmission on that thing is a damn mess. So I was, like, without a vehicle. The only option that I had was, was drive one of the motorcycles, which I tried to work on today. And unfortunately, the Kawasaki Ninja 250 won't friggin' start. The battery's dead on it now. So... I started to work on that, I got the damn thing running, or at least trying to, and then there's the throttle linkage or something in the carburetor, because when I turn the throttle, I turn it so much, and I look, stop that, and I look, and the butterflies don't open, and all of a sudden they snap open, so something is, is binding someplace, and I don't know what the hell it is, it wasn't doing that before, but now it is, so it needs to be fixed before the throttle cable breaks on the thing, so I need to deal with that, so I had just a real year worth of shit. It was just shit this past year. Thankfully, good things do happen. Exactly one hour after I, I lost my, my job there, that uh, huge part of my income, I, I got another job. The phone just rang. Just like that. And I started that new job. And that's been working out pretty well, and they're really glad to have me. I came into the, um, the um, company as somebody to... Uh, push pencils and sign checks and do billing and properly handle the paperwork side of the business that, that wasn't ever there. And I ended up becoming, instead, an investor in the company because whenever they couldn't make ends meet, I'm writing the checks out of my own account. And uh, I solved a lot of the problems financially for that company to keep them running. And then when the checks come in to pay them, I just reimbursed myself. And uh, they're very happy with that. Uh, everything has been working out great. Uh, this week, we should have our heads above water for a change. I think we're going to be well off. And we're going to start putting money into a little savings account that I've worked out for them. And uh, I think overall, the company is going to be very, very happy with what I've been doing. So, um, 
What does that mean to you now that I've been rambling on and on for approximately 22 minutes? Well, I uploaded a couple of videos with Bee McQueen because I wanted to do something different. I was tired of the same old, same old shit. You know, putting the Volkswagen bus together is just, it's, it's, I love the bus, really I do. I like the project, and it's not that hard, but I'm a little tired of it. And it doesn't mean that I'm losing wind on it, losing, it doesn't mean that I'm losing steam on it, or I'm losing interest, or that I want to move on to something else. I just wanted to take a break from it. So I did take a break from it. I pulled her up here, we made a couple of videos with a couple jokes, and some people just, just said some real sh nasty shit about us and my videos, and then threatened to unsubscribe, or some of them actually unsubscribed, along with a comment saying that they hated me so badly, that hurts. No. That they didn't want any part of my, my subscription, being subscribed to me, and they just wanted to be gone. Blah, blah, blah. Alright, enough of the BS. You're going to talk like an asshole, I use the tools that are available to me, and I hit the delete button. Goodbye. Okay? If you're going to be a dick, I don't need you. But what's funny is that um, so many of these people that unsubscribe, which, by the way, was 11, <laughs> out of 25,172 or something like that, I lost 11 people. So that turned out to be, um, I forget what the math was, I think it was 0.059%. Not even 1%. Five one hundredths of a percent. Oh, I'm so hurt. Boomer, you're being bad. Stay. So as I said, I'm so, so hurt. So friggin' hurt. But anyway, by the next day, some of these people that had commented, I remembered who they were, and I looked in the emails that I get, because every time somebody subscribes, I get an email that shows what their name is and who subscribed. And some of these people came back. Yeah, that's right. They talk all this shit. They, they hated on me. They unsubscribed. And then they resubscribed. So, I mean, I couldn't possibly be that terribly bad. I must be like Howard Stern. You know, even the people that hate him listen to him because they want to know what he's going to say. Well, there it is. So I am, I am engaging with the a-holes, which you're not supposed to do, but I like doing it because I think it's funny. And in the future, I'm going to be sharing some of these comments from these people because I have about 12 years of them that I've saved. And I've never mentioned that before. But every time somebody leaves a jerky comment, I put it in the archive. I just save it. Save it. I, I was just saving it for a rainy day. I knew there was going to be a time when I was going to be able to read these comments off, and that you guys get to enjoy them with me. I'm not hurt by these comments in any way. I think they're they're actually rather amusing in most cases because most people aren't watching the video, they're not paying attention, and they're making comments to things that they're, they don't see or that they're, they're, they're filling in the blanks for things because they decided to fast forward through the video or some other shit. I don't know what the problem is. It doesn't make any sense to me. For people that are threatening to unsubscribe or for the people that bail on me, those aren't my friends. My friends are the people that subscribe to me, that leave me comments, that encourage me, that are there to, to respect me, that are there to give me suggestions to make things better. Not the people telling me what to do, not the people threatening to leave me, not any of that. And looking back at all the times that I have ever made any changes to any of my YouTube videos that were a little different from what I do from the norm, I've received nothing but BS. And, and here's a list, going back to the beginning. The first time that I was the first person probably in the world, to put a CR500 engine into an SV650 frame. Yeah, I might be the first person ever to do that. And I did it because, well, I found a cheap SV650 and I always wanted a CR500 engine in a streetable bike. So I put the two together and I made that work. I wasn't happy with it. I did have some problems with it. One of the things was the Kickstarter uh, shaft kept breaking off of it. So I just parked it and I figured I'll come back to it at a later date. And Somebody once told me there's no such thing as a bad idea, there's just, uh, a, a, the only thing that's bad is timing. Your idea is good, you just have to wait until the timing is better. So I didn't have the money at the moment, and, and I didn't have the time to work on it. And I just didn't feel like working on it because it frustrated me, so I just put it in the corner and forgot about it. Then I realized the CR500 engine will fit in a CR250 frame. So I get a smaller, lighter bike that I set up with street suspension. And uh, it would be something that's a little faster, easier to throw around because it's so much lighter and smaller. It just seemed like a better idea. So I picked up a CR250 frame, put the CR500 engine in it, demonstrated that, then I got called a quitter. <laughs> I'm not a quitter. I just had a better, newer idea, and I moved on to something different. I didn't quit. What also happened at the same time is I found a really cheap uh, SV650 engine, 
And I still have that SV650 to this day, and that's actually been a really good bike, and it's been a whole lot of fun. So I've been riding it since. Uh, one of the other things that I taught a whole lot of shit for is putting Volkswagens on my channel. Yeah, I know, I'm Duckman Cycles. I used to be strictly a motorcycle channel, upkeeping your motorcycle, changing out your, your uh, chains. That was probably one of the biggest chain-changing videos on YouTube is one of mine. And other general maintenance motorcycle-related type videos, as well as my special projects like the Doodle Bastard, the CR500, which I don't know when I'm going to ever finish that damn thing, which I still get criticized for, for that to this day. But right now, like I said, not a bad idea, just bad timing. And I have so much going on that it's, it's not going to get touched until I get into my new shop. And we'll get to that in a second, too. But I got some notes here to help me remember everything. But when I started doing Volkswagen stuff here on my uh, Cycles channel, I had to add Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I caught some criticism for Volkswagen stuff. All of my motorcycle fans are like, why are you not doing so much motorcycle stuff? And it's not so much that I didn't want to do motorcycle stuff. It's just that my motorcycle stuff that I had done has already been played out. I've done most of what I wanted to demonstrate. There wasn't any more that I wanted to do, and I didn't ride as much. A lot of my riding friends have moved on. They had kids, they got married, they moved off. So I'm here all by myself with my motorcycles, and, well, that's not as much fun as it used to be. But anyway, Volkswagens came into my life, so I started restoring uh, Carmen gear for my ex-girlfriend at the time, and I started putting that stuff here on the channel, and it was highly successful. But as I said, the people that have been with me for a while, some of them hated on it. It's not what they wanted to see. Well, my answer is, if it's not what you want to see, then go find what you want to see on another YouTube channel. It doesn't have to be here. There's other stuff everywhere. There's, what, billions of videos up there now. So the next thing that happened, you fast forward a couple years, I picked up Eleanor. My 1956 Volkswagen Beetle that was soaked under seawater. That's right, six feet of seawater during Hurricane Ivan, and then the thing was left out to rot for ten years and just totally caved in. Everybody told me I was crazy. The car I'm putting together is a piece of garbage. Everybody made fun of me, and I, I still I still catch shit for it on some of my older videos because the idiots don't watch the newer videos. They just watch the old video. You're crazy. That's a piece of shit. You'll never get it done. It's almost done already. <laughs> it's currently over at Earl's. And that's another thing. When that car went to Earl's Body Shop, I got called, once again, a quitter because I'm not going to be taking care of all the final body work myself. Well, that's not what I want to do. It's not what I'm good at. I know who's good at it, so I'm going to take the car and give it to somebody that's good at it, and Earl does some of the best work ever, and I'll pay for it to make it the way I wanted it. And I just wanted a really nice driver. But Earl isn't just going to stop there. When I get the car back, it's going to be museum quality. And that scares me. I don't know what I'm going to do with this car in that kind of condition. I think I might have to go get a storage unit or something and park it in there. Because I'm a little worried with all the shit that I have in this house and all the shit in my garage. Something's going to fall down and hit it and just fuck that paint up. And I'm not in the, in the mood to go ahead and send the car back to Earl to be fixed because I fucked it up. So I, <laughs> we're going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. But I caught shit for taking it there to a professional shop for a lot of different reasons. One, I was called a quitter. Two that um, I'm incapable of doing it, which is why I had to go somewhere else. No, I could do it. It just wouldn't have been as good and it wouldn't have been as fast by any means. And um, the last reason was, and I think it was just out of utter jealousy, that I did do what I said I was going to do. I did get the car together, and I did send it to some place where it's going to be taken care of properly, and I do have the money to pay for it to get it the way that I want it to be. And... I've been saving up for that car for since my teens, so I've had some money put on the side for that thing for a very, very long time. And I mean, it's, there's been money put aside for that thing for a long, long time. And a lot of those parts that are on on Eleanor were actually parts that I've been saving since I was a teenager. And the biggest example, the easiest thing to see, is those fenders. Those fenders I bought, I think I was 18 or 19 years old at a car show down here in the other end of Florida, and. Uh, I've <laughs> had them ever since, and I'm finally getting to use them. Well, anyway, the next thing I talked about was Eleanor's engine. That's right, I devoted, dedicated an entire video explaining as to what I was going to do with Eleanor's engine. First, I was going to put a stock engine. That's the one that's currently on the pan right now. It runs good. It runs good. I think we're going to be happy with that. But I was going to build 
another engine, probably a, a 2054, um, which would be 78 millimeter crank and 94 millimeter pistons, and I forget what my cam was and all this other stuff I was going to do to it, because I had most of those parts here. So I'll be able to build that engine and I'll be happy with it. And then I suggested, hey, I think after I run that for a while and I get a little more money together, I'm going to upgrade it to a Subaru. Oh, God, did I receive a lot of hate for that. It's like, I'm taking baby steps. I'm going to run the stock engine, I'm going to run an upgraded engine, then we're going to go all out to just a Subaru. That pissed people off. Even some of my close friends got really mad about that one, and I caught a lot of shit about it. So I've never mentioned it again in another video until today. So um, I don't think Eleanor is going to be getting a Subaru engine for different reasons. We're not going to get into that exactly why, but... Subaru engine is probably not what's going to go in there, and that's actually a decision of mine, not because anybody said anything to me or anybody thought that it was a bad idea. When I got Gregory, I received a whole lot of shit also. Man, I just brought home a split window bus. Everybody went, oh my god, where the hell did you get it? How much did you pay for it? Well, first off, I don't explain money any anymore on my YouTube channel. I talk about how much I spend on things. I don't talk about how much somebody paid me for something. I don't talk about any of that. Money is not for discussion here on this YouTube channel. I'll tell you if I got a good deal, that's great. But I'm not Tavarish. I don't have really deep pockets. I do the best that I can to get a deal and come up with what I can. And anything that I can't pay for, well, I'll build it myself. And I've demonstrated that already. I mean, I built almost an entire car out of washing machines and stoves. That's right. You can watch some of the older videos if you haven't seen it already. Anyway, I brought Gregory home. People were jealous I got a split window bus, and I caught so much shit about that. And again, some of those videos where I brought it home, I'm still catching shit about it. It's just unbelievable. The older videos, some of them have been up so many years, and people watch them like they're brand new. And some of the older videos were recorded using some really old cameras that weren't even HD yet. And people criticize, you filmed it with a potato. Well, you know what? Our cameras from that long ago were potatoes. I mean, we were just like uh, the professor on Gilligan's Island with a coconut radio. We did the best we could with what we had. So you got to piss with the dick that you got. And yep, I had to film the video with a potato. Sorry, you fools. <laughs> when I got a sponsorship on Gregory with CIP1, that caught a lot of shit. Once again, I'm sharing a success story with people. What happens? Oh man, people got to beat up on me for it. I guess they figure I don't deserve it, you know, that I don't work hard enough for the things that I do. I think I work plenty hard. In fact, I, I people don't realize how much time I put into this channel. This video here, it's probably running a little bit long. Let's see, what's it say on the screen? 35 minutes. I have to cut this video up and edit it. You're probably not going to see the entire 35 minutes, but I'm going to tell you it's probably going to be about two or three hours of editing just on this talk video to get it uploaded. It's a lot longer when I do something else uh, on one of my tech videos. Those run a lot longer with all different camera angles and everything else, but the talk video is usually a little easier to clean up. This one's not going to have that many edits in it, and I'm going to try to make it as raw as possible. But, yeah, <laughs> people give me shit because of the sponsorship. You know, I guess they, like I said, they figure I don't deserve it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I lost Skeeter. <clears throat> that's, a, that's an act of God. I mean, that's something I can't control. Everything eventually stops living, you know? And, and whether it's, it's me, or if it's Boomer, or whether it was Skeeter, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. And people actually went to those videos where I was blubbering my eyes out and unsubscribed from me. And I'm a little hurt by that, I'm a little hurt by that, but it's probably more that I'm really disappointed and probably even disgusted more than hurt. That people could actually do that, they see that these things have happened to me, and they go, oh, you know, fuck this guy, <laughs> unsubscribe. Well, okay, uh, that's not somebody that I would call a friend anyway, and we're just going to let them go. <laughs> so anyway... One of the other ones that came after that was discussion of my new shop. And this is something I'm going to talk about here. My new shop. I have the money right now enough to buy a piece of property and build a shop on it and, and have kind of what I want. But I realized uh, in the past month, now working for a construction company, that I have some hookups, some connections, that if I put away just a little bit more money, I can put together something about five times the size. Now, I'm not going to give you any sizes of these things or any prices because that's not what I do. I don't talk money here. And I'm not going to promise you something 
that I, I can't provide or that isn't going to happen. I don't like talking about those kinds of things on this channel because people hold me to it. But I am going to build a shop, and that is fact. And that's going to be coming up, hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year. I'm pushing forward on that really hard. I'm putting extra money aside. I move some of my money into some other investments, and maybe it'll turn into a little something. I don't lose my ass on it. <laughs> and then I'll be like, can you guys please subscribe to me on Patreon? I really, really need the handouts. I've got a, a Volkswagen bus to feed, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's something that's coming up, but I got hated on for the new shop. You know, I'm looking at land and properties and checking out steel buildings, and people hated that. They don't want to see me succeed, and, and I don't know. I guess that that's just that's just the way people are. They just they they hate on people that are more successful than they are, and I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with it, but it's just like you guys can at least be nice. You don't like me, just unsubscribe. <laughs> just unsubscribe. You don't even have to hit the thumbs down button. If you hit the thumbs down button, by the way, you're still helping me because any thumbs down it still counts as an engagement, which is a plus point for all of my videos. So if it has, let's just say, I'm just making up a number here, but 500 likes and 50 dislikes, that's 550 engagements. And engagements, stop eating the greasy shit. And engagements are a positive thing on YouTube. So anytime you even leave a comment where you're hating on me, that's an engagement. I'll probably delete it if you're a complete douche, which most people usually are. I'm going to delete you. Stay out of that! Would you behave yourself? Look what you did. You messed your box up. You already shit in it about three times. Duckhead just fell down. You're being really bad. Hey, no. So anyway, I caught some crap about building a shop and getting into that now. And now, of course, people are going to hold me to it, but that's okay. It's going to happen, and it's going to be a big one. And, and it's just it's what I need in order to move forward with not only my YouTube, but with my personal projects and goals. There's things that I want to finish, and the only way I can do them is if I get a little more space. I just can't do it in this, this house with this property here. My neighbors are good. Nobody complains. I often hear that. <laughs> Probably more often than you think. I'd say about once or twice a week I have somebody post, your neighbors must love you. You know, I'm really tired of hearing that. <laughs> they do love me. You know why they love me? Because every time one of them breaks something and they need a tool, or any time they need something welded, guess who takes care of it for them? That's right, I'm the guy in the neighborhood that fixes everybody's shit. So everybody minds their own business and stays out of mine. Right, boom? Why don't you be a good boy? You're biting me and you're being really bad tonight. You're just being incredibly bad. Be a good boy. Well, as I was saying, I receive a lot of unnecessary and just totally undeserved bullshit from people. For things that I can't control or for things that, that are positive. Why would you rag on me for something that's positive? And after all the shit that I've been through this past year, what happened with bringing on the co-host... I was just looking to do something different. I was trying to laugh, I was trying to smile, and I was trying to get everybody to laugh and smile with me. And unfortunately, not everybody wants to be happy. Not everybody sees it that way. And, and just, there were too many douchebags, so I wanted to talk about them a little bit. Maybe you guys can laugh about them with me. Boomer, what in the hell are you doing? Be a good boy. You're being a little rotten shit tonight. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to wrap up this video. If you got any questions for me, please go ahead and post them down below in the video comments. If you'd like to email me, hit up duckshit.net, look for the contact page. You can fill out your email right there, or send one to duckmancycles at duckshit.net, and I will respond to you as fast as I can. Don't forget to check out the website also, duckshit.net, for all my different social media links and anything else that I do. You can also find the archive of all my videos. This one is the 100th Q&A mail call video, but I think we're pushing up to uh, video number 1,000 out of all my videos. So, yeah, the, if you look at the bigger picture, <laughs> I got a lot of videos up. And uh, I'm still pushing forward to getting up even more. There's lots more to come in the future, isn't there, boom? <laughs> Watch me on Wednesday over on Duckman Cycles. Because uh, Gregory the Bus will be getting his floor put in the front end there, I had to clear the floor for the steering box, so I'm going to detail the work on that. And um, I, I think it's going to turn out pretty nice. I guess we'll see when I get that far. Anyways, as always, you guys, like it, like it, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much. Take care.